بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Hey guys, I'm your host Faisal Zaidi. Welcome to Sport Zone. Let's get into action with English football as the Barclays Premier League matches were played over the weekend. Liverpool is back to winning ways in the Premier League after a marvelous 5-0 win over Norwich City at Anfield on Saturday afternoon. A wonderful strike from John Dee Henderson gave the Reds the lead before a well-worked move saw Luis Suarez double the advantage before half time. Daniel Sturridge got his third goal in three matches for Liverpool early in the second period and that was followed by a great Steven Gerrard pile driver and a Ryan Benteke own goal. Now, Chelsea dispatched Arsenal 2-1 at Stamford Bridge to pull 11 points clear of its rivals in the race for the Champions League places. Early goals from Juan Mata and Frank Lampard put the home side in complete control, but Theo Walcott's brilliant 58-minute strike gave Arsenal Wenger's team hope. However, with snow tumbling down, Chelsea was able to avoid a repeat of the midweek fixture here against Southampton, but not letting slip a two-goal lead. It enabled Rafa Benitez's team to take a firm grip on third place and establish clear distance between itself and Arsenal, which limped to its second consecutive league defeat after losing to Manchester City last weekend. Clint Dempsey scored a dramatic equaliser in added time as Tottenham denied Manchester United a battling victory at White Hart Lane. The American turned the ball in from two minutes into injury time to wild scenes in snow in North London to snatch and defeat ball sides a point fully deserved but had appeared unlikely to manage. Robert Van Persie had headed United ahead in the 25th minute before the visitors produced a resilient back-to-back -back ball display under a barrage of Tottenham pressure with visiting goalkeeper David De Gea making numerous crucial saves. The result means United's advantage at the top of the Premier League has been cut to five points this week following Manchester City's victory over Fulham on Saturday, while Spurs remain fourth as they chase a Champions League spot. Now we are to the Spanish La Liga where Real Madrid and Barcelona were action on the weekend. Now Barca's unbeaten La Liga record came to an end after the club went down 3-2 to Real Sociedad in a gripping clash at the Andorra Stadium on Saturday. Lionel Messi scored for a record 10th game in a row when he opened the scoring after 7 minutes before Pedro doubled the advantage with 25 minutes on the clock to seemingly put Barca out of sight. But Sociedad responded 5 minutes before the break through Carlos Castro and took full advantage of Gerard Piquet's second up red card to draw level uh, through a Javier Mascherano own goal shortly after the hour mark. It seemed destined to be end in a draw but substitute Immortal Agante struck in injury time to clinch a famous victory for the home side as Barca could now see its lead at the top of the table cut to 8 points should Atletico Madrid win against Levante on Sunday. Real Madrid are back to winning base as it threshed Valencia 5-0 away from home at the Mastaya. Goals from Gonzalo Higuain, two from Anker Di Maria and a double from Cristiano Ronaldo were enough to see off their rivals. Now to the world of cricket. Now the Pakistan's women will play their ICC World Cup uh, group matches in Kolkata in Eastern India state of Orissa following threats from political activists in Mumbai. The World Cup which starts on January 31st will now be played across two cities instead of just Mumbai as originally planned. However, there is no confirmation regarding the venues for the knockout stages yet. Pakistan matches had to be shifted out Mumbai due to uh, protests by Shiv Sena, a right-wing political party against Pakistan's participation in the event. With Orissa coming into the fray, the, Bar the Baraj Dal and Karinga Sena, outfits with similar ideologies view as the Shiv Sena, have issued statements opposing Pakistan's participation in the tournament. The ICC, however, did not take any chances and will not make an official announcement till all the issues related to the security of all teams, especially Pakistan, are resolved. <coughs> Now, the best players appear to write their own scripts as MS Dhoni admitted that it, ha it has been a perfect for the third ODI against England in Ranchi where they grew up. The Indian captain watched his bowlers wreck the England innings and then strolled out to the winning boundary with almost 22 overs to spare. Alistair Cook, meanwhile, was not in, was in doubt that England needed to improve before the next match on Mohali on Wednesday. A seven-wicket win was India's second comprehensive victory in a row over England and put them 2-1 ahead in the five-match series, allowing Dhoni to reflect with satisfaction on his team's efforts. 
Dhoni also hailed Rajiv Javeda's performance 3 for 19 in this match and said he was the perfect fit for the bowling all round the spot, especially with the new fielding restrictions in place. Virat Kohli contributed with yet another strong star performance, scoring 77 runs and setting up India's win after England were bowled out for only 151. After seven days of most one sided test cricket, you should go witness the first one international producer thriller as James Franklin proved New Zealand's hero to secure a one wicket victory over an, uh, for, for, with an unbeaten 47. Chasing an undemanding 2-0-8, the game had appeared to have gone when they were 8 down, still needing 69, but Kyle Mills helped add 47 for the 9th wicket, for Mitchell McCagan survived 6 deliveries to allow Franklin to pick off the remaining 22 runs. Franklin managed to keep the strike to face Ryan McLaren, another who had an impressive match and rammed a short but brilliant over the keeper before carving the winning boundary through offside. There was plenty of emotion in the New Zealand celebrations. So, these were some of the sporting covers around the world. I hope you enjoyed the show. Until next time, this is your special Zedi signing off.